Hello friends, this video on breathing and exchange of gases part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we will look at the process of exchange of gases at the alveolar membrane. So how, how it happens as per this pressure gradient. So we will look at that. So alveoli are the primary sites of exchange of gases as I discussed before also. So now we will look at each of the factors that how each of the factors play a role in actual exchange of gases. So the first factor which I discussed was the pressure gradient. In fact, to be more precise, partial pressure gradient. So we will see whether carbon dioxide and oxygen moves across from a region of higher partial pressure towards a region of lower partial pressure. Okay. So in order to know that, we should first know that this exchange will take place from alveoli to blood, right? So it happens from alveoli to blood, right? So we should know the values of partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli. In the alveoli, what is the air that is present? The air that which, which we have breathed in. So that air is present in the alveoli. Correct? Okay. So what is the partial pressure of oxygen in that air? The partial pressure of oxygen is 104 millimeter of mercury column. And what is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in that air? It is 40 millimeter of mercury. Now, what is the partial pressure of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the blood? When I say blood, I am talking about the blood which is carried by the blood vessels near the alveoli. Now, let us suppose this is the alveoli, right? Now, just near the alveoli are the blood vessels present like this. So, these blood vessels are actually carrying the deoxygenated blood from different parts of the body. So right now these blood vessels are carrying the carbon dioxide which they have received from different tissues of the body. Right? So this blood is basically the deoxygenated blood coming from the tissues. Coming from the body tissues. So this is that blood. So this blood, the partial pressure of oxygen is 40 and the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is 45. So th these are the values. Right? So now just thinking about the concept of partial pressure gradient. The partial pressure of oxygen is higher in alveoli and lesser in blood. Right? Therefore oxygen should move from alveoli to blood. Right? So oxygen will move out to, from across the alveolar membrane. Now if you consider the partial pressure of carbon dioxide, partial pressure of carbon dioxide is 40 in alveoli and 45 in the blood. That means it is more in blood. Therefore carbon dioxide, if you talk about carbon dioxide, it will move from blood to the alveoli. Right? So this movement of oxygen and carbon dioxide is happening as per the partial pressure gradient. So that means we, so one point is clear that okay. So that means partial pressure gradient, this concept is favorable when we talk about the exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen across the alveolar membrane. Now the second factor was the thickness of the alveolar membrane. So here in this case the membrane which is involved in diffusion is the alveolar membrane. Right? So let us look at it closely. So this is the end of the alveoli and this denotes the blood vessel. Right? So here if you see this is the alveolar cavity. So this membrane actually is the alveolar membrane. So you can see that the alveolar membrane is surrounded by one layer of epithelial cells and immediately very close to it is another layer of epithelial cells beyond which you have the blood vessels. So see they are so close by. So let us see how the nature of the alveolar membrane favors the exchange of gases. So here if you look at the alveolar membrane, it, it is made up of three layers. So what are those three layers? A simple squamous epithelium layer, 
basement substance and endothelium. So what, where is this single squamous epithelial layer of cells? Now this is a single layer of cells which is present here. So here you can see the epithelial. So this is the epithelial layer of cell. And this is a squamous epithelium and also you can see it is just one single layer of cells. Now since only one layer of cells and that to squamous epithelium, it is not very thick. It is quite thin. After that, you have the basement substance here. So here this yellow colored region which you see, that contains the basement substance or the base substance, whatever you call it. And then you have another layer of cells which is known as the endothelium of the capillaries basically. So what do we see? We see that the alveolar walls are composed of single layer of epithelial cells and they are very close to the pulmonary capillaries. So these are the pulmonary capillaries which are composed of single layer of endothelium cells. So this is your one layer of endothelium. So even this is made up of just single layer. And also if you see the close proximity of these two types of cells, that is this layer of epithelial cell of the alveolar cavity and this layer of endothelium cell of the uh, capillaries, they are so close to each other that it allows the permeability of the gases. So the gases can actually pass from one membrane to another membrane and this favors the gaseous exchange. So it is not and the most important part here is that the total thickness if you talk about even though it is made up of three layers so when I say that a particular gas for example oxygen right now is here and it wants to move in here that means it has to cross these three layers so even though they look three that is there it is a three layered structure but the total thickness is less than a millimeter the low total thickness is in the range of micrometers somewhere around 0 0.2 0 0.3 micrometers so it is not even a millimeter so it is very very thin so that is one thing which is favorable that the uh, thickness of the alveolar membrane it is really thin another thing is that since the these two layers of cells the epithelium and the endothelium since they are so close they allow the permeability of the gases so the gases can actually move from one uh, side that is from alveoli to the capillaries and vice versa so that means we can say that the thickness of the alveolar membrane also is favorable for the exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen across the alveolar membrane. Now let us look at the third factor that is the solubility of gases. So let us see how solubility of gases also affects the diffusion rate. Now the relative diffusion rate of oxygen and carbon dioxide plays an important role in the transport of gases. So now let us see how it affects. Now there is, there was a law given by a famous scientist called Graham, which is popularly known as Graham's law. Now as per that Graham's law, it was said that the relative diffusion rate, that is the relative diffusion rate, that is how fast the diffusion will take place, that is proportional to solubility that is directly proportional to solubility. So the greater the solubility of a gas, greater would be the relative diffusion rate for that gas. And it was also told that the relative diffusion rate is inversely proportional to the under root of molecular mass of that particular gas. So now if we try to compare the diffusion rate of these two gases, oxygen and carbon dioxide. Now let us suppose we want to compare the diffusion rate of carbon dioxide by the diffusion rate of oxygen. Now if we want to compare the diffusion rate of both of these, it is seen that it comes out to be because the solubility of carbon dioxide is around 22 times more than that of oxygen. Now it varies from 20 to 25 times, roughly I am taking it as 22 for my calculation and this is this. 
So this comes out to be approximately 19. So we see that the diffusion rate of carbon dioxide is 19 times more than the diffusion rate of oxygen. So we can see that the rate at which carbon dioxide will diffuse is 19 times greater than the rate at which oxygen will diffuse. So now here you can see that the diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide have actually struck strike a balance here. Now we saw in the previous slide that the difference in the gradient, the gradient in case of oxygen was more, that is the difference in the partial pressure for oxygen was more, but the difference in the partial pressure of carbon dioxide was less. But anyways, the diffusion was taking place. But since the diffusion rate of carbon dioxide is more than that of oxygen, so that factor will get compensated. So basically considering all these three factors, we can say that carbon dioxide and oxygen, they move across their exchange sites, that is they move across the alveolar membrane based on all these three factors. Carbon dioxide being more soluble has a higher diffusion rate. It moves from region of higher partial pressure towards lower partial pressure even though the difference is not very high. And also the alveolar membrane is suitable for the purpose of diffusion. So as a result of all this what happens is that oxygen moves from alveolar cavity into the blood vessels and carbon dioxide move into the alveolar cavity from the blood vessels. Clear? So I think I am able to explain you why exchange, why and how exchange of gases take place. Now this concept of exchange of gases not only holds true at the alveolar end but it also holds true between blood and the tissues. So if you look at the overall picture you will see that even between blood and tissues there is a difference in the partial pressure of carbon dioxide and oxygen and also the membranes are suitable and that is why they are also diffusion take place. So let us look at the overall exchange of gases. So not only alveoli but the overall picture. So till now we have discussed this part. So we saw let us suppose this is the alveolus. This is the inspired air, the air which we have taken in. So that air which we have taken in that has a partial pressure of oxygen 104, partial pressure of carbon dioxide 40. Right? And let us suppose this blue colored line which you see the blue colored line represent the deoxygenated blood that is the blood which contains more of okay let me write it here so whenever i say deoxygenated blood that means the blood which is rich in carbon dioxide and the blood which is rich in carbon dioxide is coming from the body tissues because the body tissues are producing carbon dioxide as a result of uh, cellular respiration Whereas whenever I am talking about oxygenated blood, I am talking about a blood which is rich in oxygen and this blood is directly coming from the air which we have breathed in. So here if you see, the air partial pressure of oxygen is more and carbon dioxide is less. Now what happens due to the difference in the partial pressure, oxygen will move out from the alveoli into the blood vessel. So here you can see this arrow oxygen is actually moving out and that is why the blood is becoming oxygenated due to the presence of oxygen this side in the pulmonary vein. Whereas the pulmonary artery which was bringing the deoxygenated blood which had more of carbon dioxide, the carbon dioxide again as per the pressure gradient moves into the alveoli. Right? So that is how the deoxygenated blood is getting converted into oxygenated blood. That is because it was deoxygenated because it was rich in carbon dioxide. Now the carbon dioxide went into the alveoli and oxygen came in. Now once oxygen came in, the blood became oxygenated. So that is how deoxygenated is getting converted into oxygenated blood. So this is what we have discussed so far. But this is not the entire flow. Let us quickly look at the entire flow. Now what happens to this oxygenated blood? This oxygenated blood then goes into the heart. From heart it gets pumped to different parts of the body. So here if you see there are a, a, a group of systemic arteries which actually carry this oxygenated blood to different body tissues. So once it reaches the body tissues, the oxygen will get inside the body tissues, right? And the carbon dioxide which, has, which are produced inside the body tissues as a result of cellular respiration will come out. 
right now it can here also exchange of gases is taking place and this exchange also take place because of a similar concept just now which we explained for example here you see the partial pressure of oxygen is 95 and the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is 40 so here we are talking about this oxygenated blood so here the partial pressure of oxygen is more and here the partial pressure of oxygen is less so it will move from high to lower partial pressure that is why it moves inside and for carbon dioxide it is just the opposite and that is why carbon dioxide comes outside now what happens to this blood the blood lost oxygen and it gained carbon dioxide so the blood blood became deoxygenated and this deoxygenated blood again goes to the heart and the heart pump pumps it through the pulmonary artery and sends it to the lungs. Lungs has nothing but alveoli. So once it goes to the lungs, the alveoli again pumps in oxygen and this process continues. So you see, when we talk about exchange of gases, circulatory system and respiratory system, they work very closely together, right? Okay, so this was the concept of exchange of gases. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.